What's happening guys? Drew back again with Princess Craft RV and today we are going to walk through the appliances and the accessories on the 2021 Tiger Moth by Taxa Outdoors. All right guys, starting up front, as always, we're going to go over that loadout procedure. Uh, the Tiger Moth here is going to ride on a two inch ball. So let's make sure we are outfitted with that. Of course, we have our slide latch up front. We're gonna go ahead and unlock that. So what we do is just slide that back. It will stay held back in that release position. So what we're going to do is center our ball underneath that drop. We're then of course going to lower our hand crank jack on top of that ball. Once we've done so, we're going to go and lock it down. So what we do is we slide this latch lock forward, paying special attention that we do have both teeth here engaged on the frame, uh, making sure we have a nice secure connection. We're then going to go back and pin this down. What that's going to do is keep this from potentially rattling loose and make this connection even more secure. We're then going to take our tow chains. We will cross those underneath the coupler hooking them onto the receiver of the vehicle, making sure that we have enough room to make our turns left or right, but not so much room that they may make contact with the pavement. Same goes with the seven way cord here. Now this is going to give you full function to your tow vehicle's braking system, charging system, lights, marker lights, things like that. This is going to plug into that, the corresponding bumper receptacle that you will have installed on your vehicle. And then also the last and probably one of the most important tow components is going to be your emergency breakaway. It's very important that this is on a separate or third connection point to the vehicle. You can go ahead and utilize either a quick link or a carabiner to do so. Again, make sure you have enough room to make your turns left or right, but not so much room that this may make contact with the pavement. What this actually is, is going to be your last line of defense. If some, these other tow components were to fail, as the two vehicles started to separate, this is like a ripcord to the electric brake system. It is uh, built in to avoid like a runaway camper scenario. So very important that we do have that third or separate connection point on the receiver. And then we have our jack here, of course, easy crank style jack uh, to uh, go either up or down. All right, guys, uh, right up front here, we have this nice heavy duty steel storage box that Taxa has installed for us. Uh, does have a locking mechanism on there to keep those things secure. Other than that, it has a nice gas strut. And, and again, it's just a storage box, but it is nice, high quality, heavy duty steel. And then back behind that, we have, of course, our storage rack that would allow us to go ahead and strap down a generator or even just some extra cargo uh, right behind that storage compartment. And then up top here, right up front, we have your air conditioner. Um, this is, of course, just a window unit that is hanging kind of out here into the front. Uh, one important thing to note is that when going down the road, this cover does need to be installed. That's going to help protect it from dirt debris, uh, rock damage, things like that. So uh, easy peasy, you just go ahead and slip this on and there are going to be corresponding snaps. So we're gonna make sure that we have that directionalized correctly and we just go ahead and snap. You got two up front, one on the side here, and then two on the bottom. Now, one very important thing uh, to make sure is that, of course, you remove this cover. Remember to remove it before going ahead and firing up that AC. Uh, it's not gonna function for very long with this in place, of course. And then right, also right up front here, we do have a 12 volt cigarette lighter style receptacle here. Uh, would allow us to maybe charge some secondary devices up here. Uh, you know, it's just nice to have an extra power supply, uh, even in kind of a, a semi non-traditional location like this. And then we have our spare, uh, of course, mounted on the other side of the A-frame here. Uh, is a full size spare. 
uh, on a matching rim, which is just these steely rims, which is cool. Uh, so if you do are on the road and you do need to change a tire, you're not really gonna be missing much. There's not gonna be any difference or uh, essentially a huge rush to go ahead and have that tired repair. Because again, you're gonna be riding on a matching spare with a matching wheel. And then down below here, we do have a little uh, keeper for our seven way plug. So the idea being is that if you just kind of leave this out in the weather, your terminals here will start to uh, corrode and degrade and things like that. So what this does is this allows you to go ahead and open it and store that up out of the way to protect that seven way head uh, and all those terminals inside. Making our way here around the side of the unit, uh, we have first up is going to be our 12 volt solar inlet. So this is designed for a portable solar panel. It will allow you to go ahead and supplement solar again with any of those briefcase folding style panels. The idea being is that you have a direct connection to the battery here. This particular plug is set up for ZAMP power, ZAMP solar power. So what we would do is take our ZAMP panel, plug it in here, take our panel out into the sunlight, directionalize it as necessary and we can go ahead and take advantage of solar uh, in a less intrusive manner than having some full-time roof mounted solar panels. And then down below here, we have our 30 amp, 110 volt power connection, power supply, however you want to think about it. Now Taxa does things a little bit different. Since this is such a small unit, uh, you can get away with running it exclusively on 15 amp power. That's what Taxa had in mind. Although they did install a 30 amp plug here. So if you wanna go ahead and invest in a 30 amp plug uh, to kind of simplify things, you can feel free to do so. But in its base capacity, what Taxa had in mind is that you would actually use a dog bone style reducer. And this is going to be a twist lock plug. They give you kind of this extra adapter piece. Uh, but the idea being is that you will go ahead and make your connection here onto the camper with this. It's very easy to do so. You have two slanted receptacles here and one L-shaped. As long as you just go ahead and line everything up, we're gonna plug straight in. We're going to give it an eighth inch turn to the right here. That's going to lock it in. Then we do have a secondary collar here to screw down, lock it in further. And then if we look at the other end of that plug, you see it is just a normal standard household 15 amp outlet. The idea being is that you would provide your own um, extension cord at any length that you'd like, you can go ahead and plug this connection here. What that will allow you to do is camp in not exclusively, or not exclusive RV parks. You can camp essentially anywhere that has a 15 amp outlet. So that's a really cool, um, it's really cool the way they set that up. And then if we go ahead and move on to the tires and lug nuts. Now these lug nuts have been torqued to a hundred foot pounds here in the shop. The manufacturer is going to recommend a retorque procedure. So what that's going to include for us is going to be the first 10, 25, 50 miles of travel. They want you to go ahead, retorque those lug nuts, make sure that they are maintaining that 100 foot pounds of torque. Now also tire pressure is immensely important when we do talk about trailers. With any trailer, we do run them at the max tire pressure rating. You will find that stamped on the sidewall of the tire here in that more traditional location. And you will also find that stamped on the data tag that is going to be on the inside of the A-frame there. For this particular unit, that max tire pressure is going to be 50 PSI. So that's going to be the magic number. Uh, that's gonna give you the highest flexibility in terms of weight rating, whether you are running the unit completely full or completely empty, that 50 PSI is going to be our magic number here and then if we kind of hop back up we have our uh, awesome little propane tank here uh, it's kind of a miniature two gallon propane tank um, and it's just the cutest thing ever so uh, it is mounted here on the fender which is an excellent uh, utilization of space uh, to go ahead and take that off we just go ahead and loosen this strap here kind of move that out of the way and there is a little bracket that keeps that in place. So with the aid of that little L-shaped bracket and that strap, that's not gonna go anywhere. So you have this little two and a half gallon uh, tank and you were, will connect that, excuse me, to the unit utilizing uh, this uh, propane pigtail. So 
very easily just have a standard regulator in place. We would screw that onto this tank and then we're going to utilize this quick connect fitting for whichever propane appliance uh, that we wish to utilize. Now this unit does come with a small kind of secondary camping stove. Uh, you can of course use that at the rear kitchen area of the unit or really out here even on the fender would be fine. Uh, but you do have, it. I'm not exactly the length of this, it looks like it's probably about a 10 foot uh, propane hose, so that's going to give you the flexibility to go ahead and utilize the cooktop and any propane appliances in the way that you would like. And then uh, here at the rear we have our uh, stabilizer jacks. Now it's very important with this particular unit since it is so lightweight on the tongue that we do remember to for sure, put these down anytime we get into the in, in to the inside of the unit. It may be hard to remember at first, but these will, believe it or not, tip over uh, if a grown adult is in the rear and you do not have these stabilizer jacks down. Now these are for stabilization, they're not for leveling. Uh, the idea being is that we would get the unit within our comfort level and then once we are satisfied, we go ahead and run these down. These do use a spline drive crank handle, which will be included in the unit. You're going to insert that on this stud here. You'll come down, make contact with the pavement, maybe a quarter turn more just to sure everything up. Same on the way up. There's no need to go overly snug with these stabilizer jacks. They are just, again, meant to stabilize the unit, keep it from uh, tipping back, and to keep it from feeling like you're walking around there on the suspension of the camper. And then if we come back here into the kitchen area, of course, we have that kind of all slid out and ready to go. Uh, first thing up is going to be your uh, water container here. That's nice. It does have a little spout on it, which is a cool feature. Uh, excellently placed here into the kitchen area of the unit. Uh, that way, if you're utilizing this uh, to prep a meal or whatever, you have that right at hand. Easy to wash hands, of course, if this is in. Uh, and then we have storage here underneath that pull out drawer. And it's cool, they have these brackets here on the bottom of the table that allow you to kind of move that away. But this is still a very secure surface or, or uh, the very, yes, a very secure surface um, so that if you are, you know, you need access into this drawer and you're still kind of prepping a meal up here, you have kind of the different options to do so. We can move that out of the way and take a look at the storage inside there. And then, of course, if you are packing it up, we just go ahead and place that on top of the drawer. And then we have these bungees here that are going to go ahead and secure that down. And then if we take a look here at the cutting board top, which again is just an excellent idea from Taxa, and we go ahead and remove that. We have some other components in here. We have some roof rack components, keys, things like that for that Thule roof rack that we have up top. And then we have our screen doors as well. So with both of these openings, they are going to utilize a Velcro connection here around the outside of those doorways. That will allow you to go ahead and install these screen rooms uh, to take advantage of kind of that open air scenario where you have these doors open, but you're not gonna have the bugs and things like that uh, coming into the unit. So we're gonna go ahead and put this back and stow that away. So once we've done so, uh, it's worth mentioning that there are going to be release. There is going to be a release here on the right side. So it does lock in the outward position, which is good. So once we've done that, we just go ahead and release here and we will push that in. And you're good to go. Of course, you have lock and key here on that drawer as well to keep the, whatever you're storing in there secure. And then one thing we didn't mention is um, to let you see actually the cooktop that is provided. Now this is going to function just like any other of those kind of camping style cooktops. Um, you know, kind of very basic, but is certainly enough to get you, get you going uh, when you are out there on the road. All right, guys, one last thing to mention here at the rear of the unit is going to be how to set up your Thule bag awning. Uh, first things first is we are going to go ahead and unzip the bag here. Uh, that's meant to keep any weathers and road debris off of the unit. Now, this can be uh, quite a bit fiddly to go ahead and set up if you are uh, doing it by yourself. So it is a lot easier if you have a friend. So for today's presentation, I am going to enlist uh, the help of my amazing assistant, Brooke, here. What she's going to do is give me a hand 
uh, while I'm extending those legs and getting this thing supported. So once we have that bag out of the way, we can see that this is rolled up and secured with some uh, snaps here. So we just, of course, number one, unsnap those. And then this whole thing's going to go ahead and roll out for us. And what we will see here on the awning cross support is going to be our legs here. Now these are our downward support legs. And I'm just gonna have Brooke go ahead and hold this right now as we go ahead and take a look at the other support legs. We're gonna find those tucked up here into the uh, awning crossbar as well. So first we're going to go ahead and remove those. Uh, those can be held in place with the Velcro here. So we'll go ahead and Velcro one of those. There are three uh, points, of, points to secure there. And we need to roll this down one more time. And if you take a look here at the cross support bracket, we have a hole there for our support. Now, once we have that in place and fully inserted, we're gonna come here and these are like telescopic legs. So we wanna just go ahead and rotate that clockwise to go ahead and hold that tension. We're going to be the, do the very same thing over here. How you doing, Brooke? Are your arms getting tired yet? So we go ahead and insert here. Again, we will go ahead and tighten that securely. And then lastly, all we have to do is go ahead and fold these legs down. And these will be, these will be uh, stuck into the ground. So we'll use that same protrusion on the end and go ahead and insert that into the ground. And then again, we're going to uh, tighten up the tension here on these arms. And that's it. So you have extra guide wires and things that we have down here on the ground to go ahead and further secure that awning. These awnings are lightweight by design. So just keep that in mind. Uh, they're not meant for any wind or anything like that. So make sure we are utilizing this on a nice, clear, sunny day. If you want to be like Doc Brown and Marty McFly, then we certainly have a surprise for you. Uh, this door and the way it opens is just really cool and multifunctional. So as you can see, it's going to lift up um, to the side. And what that does is, of course, it gives you a nice wide opening here, but it is also going to uh, provide you with some sunshade protection and things like that with this kind of uh, pulling double duty as now a awning or uh, roof to uh, this space. Now, when we are standing here on the inside of the unit, uh, first thing is going to be worth noting is going to be our switches for the units. These are mostly light switches. Um, let me go ahead and turn them off so I can see. Uh, this one's going to be our night lights, which are going to be the red tinted lights uh, to allow us to go ahead and see in the dark without, uh, of course, uh, destroying our night vision. And then we have this light here, which is just going to be a backlight there at the uh, kind of front of the unit. We then have our main LED light strip here. And last but not least, this last switch is going to be our exterior porch light that is at the rear. Uh, it is just mounted right above that outside kitchen. Again, if you're utilizing that space after dark, um, it's nice to have a light out there um, to help see what you're doing. Uh, and then um, furthermore, here we have our smoke alarm right up front here. This is going to be a nine volt driven smoke alarm. Very important that we do test all of our safety equipment every single time we take the unit out. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure we test this smoke alarm. And we're also going to carry a spare nine volt battery with us while we're camping. In the event that this were to start indicating that it has a low battery, we wanna make sure that we do have a replacement for that. We will also go ahead and uh, inspect the pressure level on our fire extinguisher, making sure that, that, that it is holding pressure and that in the event that we were to need it, uh, it is going to be ready to go. And then we have our pedestal table here and it is installed. We're gonna go over how to kind of get that in the way so we can further demonstrate some of the other features here on the inside. Uh, now this is a, the, the top here is fit on by pressure. So it's very easy. We just go ahead and remove that. That's gonna slip off, no problems. We'll put that out of the way. Uh, now this is a kind of utilizes a ratchet closure or um, system here on the bottom of the leg. So we have a little button here we need to press. That's gonna release that gearing and allow us to go ahead and unscrew that pedestal. 
Now, once we've done that, if we were going to go ahead and make up the bed further, we're going to unvelcro this strap here and that whole partition is going to go ahead and slide this way. Now, once we've done that, all we have to do is take what was the back cushions and fold them over and then the, the whole space becomes a sleeping space uh, and you're good to go. So it takes just a few minutes to go ahead and set that up. And then if we want to put it back in couch mode, we just slide this forward, which is probably going to be easier to do from this direction. And very important, let's make sure we don't forget to go ahead and secure this down. That way it's not working itself out when we are going down the road. Uh, as I kind of step here into the unit further, we have our 12 volt exhaust style fan here. Now this is just pushed and pulled to open. So if we go ahead and pull that down, we're going to be, um, you know, closed. It kind of feels like you're a semi driver. Doo -doo. And then if you go ahead and open it up, it's, it's just easy. And uh, we have our on off switch here. So it's very kind of easy exhaust fan. The idea being is that if we are taking advantage of that open air environment, we have those of those doors open. This is going to uh, run as an exhaust fan and that's going to help uh, further provide a cross breeze throughout the unit. Uh, and then when we're making our way here to the rear of the unit, we're going to take a look at the storage that we have uh, underneath each of these compartments here. You have a quite a bit of storage there. Uh, we have these little elastic bands here that will allow us to utilize the uh, carabiners that were provided there by the manufacturer to keep that up uh, again to help load and unload uh, things like that we're going to go ahead and take this opportunity to talk a few minutes here about the windows that are going to be utilized throughout this unit uh, now these are going to be acrylic pane windows so what that means is we do need to make sure that we use a mild detergent and microfiber cloth when we are cleaning them they do uh, scratch pretty easy uh, the selling point is they are super lightweight so that's why we went that route uh, now we have these latches all the way around the outside. So starting, we just of course unlatch everything and then we go ahead and hold our window out and we will tighten up the struts here. Now, once we've done that, that window is going to go ahead and stay open on its own. If we would like to go ahead and utilize the built-in screen, we just pull up from the top or excuse me, pull up from the bottom. And then if we want to pull down from the top, we have a privacy screen there. And one all other thing to also mention is that if we take a look here at this track, we have kind of two positions. So in the middle of this little valley here, if we were to go around and latch all of these in that valley, that's going to give us a fingertips worth of opening there if we want to go ahead and uh, vent the cabin here, but still keep our, uh, keep things relatively secure. Or if we have like, uh, condensation issues, things like that here on the inside, uh, cracking a window is going to, of course, help with that. Now, before going down the road, we do need to make sure that we stow that window completely. We're going to do so by pulling all the way back past that plastic bracket and securing all of these latches all the way around the unit. All right, guys, here at the front, first thing we got is going to be our carbon monoxide detector here. Uh, now that's also going to be a battery operated appliance. We do wanna make sure that we have a spare battery within the unit while we're camping. And with all of our safety equipment, we do test it every single time we take the unit out. And then right below that, we have our air conditioner. Uh, of course, this is going to function very simply like any other uh, window AC you've ever used. We'll have a couple modes here for uh, just straight fan speeds to circulate air. And then we'll have a low cool and a high cool, of course, air conditioner settings. And then we have our thermostat here, which is going to be our setting within the setting. Now this does have a removable filter, which is going to be here on the side. You do just go ahead and slip that out the side. It is washable, rinse it off in the sink. Once it does dry, just go ahead and replace it. And then below that, we have our battery disconnect switch. Uh, what we're going to go ahead and utilize that for is going to be periods of long-term long -term storage. The battery is housed underneath here uh, in the front wall. We're gonna get an eyes on that. 
uh, but it's not the easiest to get to. So what that means is that you, when you're storing the unit, you don't have to physically disconnect those battery terminals. What this is going to do is allow you to do that without accessing the battery. And then beside that, we have our fuse panel breaker box. Uh, this is going to be where our 12 volt appliances as well as our 110 volt uh, breakers are housed. The, on the right side, these are going to be our 12 volts. They will utilize a automotive replaceable blade style fuse. Uh, you guessed it, it's going to be my recommendation to go ahead and keep some spares with the unit in the event you need to change one. And then here on the other side, we have our 110 volt appliances which are going to go ahead and utilize that resettable standard kind of household breaker here. And then on the other side of that, we should have a uh, couple USBs up top here, allow you to go ahead and charge any devices. And then we have a cigarette lighter, lighter style receptacle as well. And last but not least, we have a voltage indicator. Of course, we're not plugged in right now. We are running off of straight battery power. That's why it is indicating that we are at 12.9 volts. Now, if I go ahead here and lift up this compartment, our battery is going to be stored underneath in this in this uh, box here. So these utilize little thumb screws. So all we do is just go ahead and remove those all the way around the exterior. And this front panel is going to go ahead and pop off and that will certainly give us access to our battery. Now what we have installed here right now is going to be a standard lead acid group 24 deep cycle battery. Uh, there is maintenance involved with that particular style of battery. So once every 90 days, we're going to go ahead and remove the vent panels from the top of the battery. And we're going to inspect that water level within that battery, making sure that it is uh, at the clear marked water level. Uh, we're going to use distilled water if we do need to do any refilling or anything like that. Uh, so make sure you're checking that every 90 days. All right, guys, that just about covers it here with the walkthrough of the Tiger Moth. We really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you do have any questions or concerns, uh, please don't hesitate to comment below or give us a call. Uh, just so you know, weight rating is 200 pounds, so we good. And it can be a bit fiddly, fiddly, fiddle, 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 fiddly, fiddly. Got my legs out. I'm just kidding.